On Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, students from Asbury Seminary in Kentucky gathered for their chapel service. After a call to confession, one Christian news outlet reports that over 100 students fell to their knees and bowed at the altar. CBN reports that since then, it's turned into a Holy Spirit outpouring that shows no signs of stopping and also stated a revival is taking place. So this chapel service has continued for several days. Well, today is Monday, February 13th, and that chapel service is still going. So since Wednesday, people have traveled from all over the country to observe and even participate in what's going on at Asbury. Now, this has also gone viral on social media, and there are many people on one side of things affirming that this is a legitimate move of God, this is revival, uh, they're trying to stir things up in their own churches, and they're traveling there. I've even seen posts of people saying, hey, I was kind of skeptical, but I went and experienced it for myself, and I can tell you that this is of God, this is a revival, this is legit. Now, on the other side of things, you have people being very skeptical about what's happening happening. People saying that this is just experience-driven emotionalism, and we need to beware, and, and they're warning against this type of thing. So that's kind of two very different reactions from Christian social media. Well, on Saturday night, I happened to be speaking at a women's conference about 20 minutes from Asbury Seminary. And so the next morning, that would be Sunday morning, I decided to just get in my car and go and check it out for myself and see what's going on. And so I want to I want to start by saying that I'm not against revival. I'm for revival, and I'm not against the gifts of the spirit. I'm not against charismatics, um, but uh, you know I always want to test all things. So I I just I had an open heart, but I wanted to be discerning. So I walked into the chapel, and the way we found it was a student was walking out, and she helped us find where to go. And she had told me that in the mornings, it's a little slower, it kind of gains steam later in the afternoon. So when I walked in, there was maybe 20 or 30 people scattered throughout the chapel. Uh, people were either sitting quietly or talking to one another. There was a young woman on the stage with a guitar singing songs, and I don't even think she was amplified. She was just up there singing, and uh, most people were not singing along. They were just sort of sitting quietly. And so I found a seat and I sat and just sat there for a little while. I closed my eyes. I prayed. I said, Lord, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear and wisdom to discern truth. Now, I'll give you my own subjective feeling, and that is that it felt very sweet. There was nothing weird going on. It was very calm. Uh, it felt very similar to what I experience at churches across the country every Sunday uh, who are waiting with expectation for a service to start. So there was nothing unusual about that. I did not encounter any sort of um, powerful force that some people are describing. Um, just this is my subjective feelings. And this is why it's important we don't trust our feelings, right? We have to discern through our feelings. Um, so what I hope, that's really it. So after I sat there for a few minutes um, and prayed and kind of took in what was happening, um, I went ahead and went back to the hotel to pick up my family so we could come back to Nashville. So the point of making this video is because here's what I'd like to do. Uh, as, as far as I can judge, um, I have no reason to think that God isn't working something really beautifully in the hearts of the students at Asbury. I've had experiences like that, uh, especially when I was younger. Um, I'll be honest with you, coming from a bit of a charismatic background, I've seen this type of thing a lot. So I will admit to you my bias that I come to it with a bit of skepticism because I can't tell you how many 24-hour uh, worship services I took part in and 24-hour, you know, quote-unquote revivals and things like that, were, which really were more just experience-driven. Uh, and But I have no reason to think that what God is working in these students is not real. So that's not really the point of making this video. The point of making this video is that I do have three concerns with how it's been responded to, okay? And the first one is how we define revival. The second one is the social media component. And the third one is the vulnerability when something like this happens, the vulnerability of it being co-opted by something else. Okay. So let's just go through these concerns one by one. I am very concerned, number one, about how we define revival. If this Asbury revival is real, if it's something God is really doing, then there will be long-term lasting fruit. And that's not actually something we can judge right now. So I think it's a little bit um, 
premature to say revival has broken out because we don't know that yet. This could be experience driven. It could just be people um, wanting to come together and sing and pray. And I think that's wonderful that the, I'd much rather college students want to gather in their chapel and sing and pray than go party at a bar. OK, so I'm not down on that. But um, I want to be really careful how we define revival. And what I'd like to do is share a story from the Old Testament about King Josiah. So Josiah became king when he was eight years old and he had a very wicked father and a very wicked grandfather. The people had forgotten the word of God. And so Josiah raised money to make some repairs in the temple. And then when Helkiah, the priest, was in the temple, in the midst of those repairs, he discovers a book, the book of the law. So he discovers the word of God in the temple that the people had forgotten. When Helkiah read the word of God to Josiah, Josiah's immediate response was to tear his clothes. And this really signified mourning and repentance. And he began to call for repentance. And this law of God was read to all the people in the land. And then there was a covenant made between the people and the Lord. And the, the long-lasting fruit and result of this revival was that the temple, all of the objects of pagan worship were removed from the temple. The high places were torn down. The mediums and the witches were expelled from the land. And so there was very lasting and tangible results that you could see in changed lives. And I think that's very important for us to remember when we define uh, revival. If you are somebody who's been abused by revival movements, which we're going to talk about in a moment, I hope to comfort your heart that you might be seeing all this stuff happen on social media. And you know what? It's okay to wait and see. It's okay to test every spirit. In fact, that's biblically what we're commanded to do, test every spirit and hold fast to what is true. Let's pray with hopeful hearts that God is moving in the lives of these kids. But let's wait and see the lasting fruit before we jump on bandwagons. And that brings me to concern number two, and that's the social media hype. From the get-go, people were blasting out all over social media. Revival has broken out. There's this great and massive thing happening here at Asbury. And here's my concern with that. A, you're putting pressure on the students to keep it going. Now it's like, oh, the whole world knows about us. And so there's going to be a bit of a battle, I think, with the flesh of how, you know, do we keep this thing going? And, the, and just psychologically, that's going to be present. And then there's also this sort of viral sensation thing that happens where people feel compelled to jump on a bandwagon to make a decision right now, one way or the other. And I just don't think that's going to lead to any kind of holiness. And then it can also tend to make people feel like, oh, I want that experience for myself. And then they get in their car they start driving from eight hours away or they start flying there thinking that there's some maybe kind of Holy Spirit hotspot that they're going to get a touch from God that they can't get somewhere else. And friends, I hope I hope to it, it, I, I hope to persuade you today to realize that you have the Word of God. Probably many of you have several copies of it in your house. You have access to the words of God. And if you're a Christian, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go somewhere to have something happen to you that will give you more of what you can't get in your home. What I experienced on Sunday morning, I can experience in my home. I can pray like that in my home. I can pray at my church. So uh, the social media hype can, I think, have a very corruptive influence. Be on guard for that. And the third thing, and I think this is possibly the most urgent of my concerns, and that's the vulnerability of when something like this happens, that it becomes co-opted by movements like the New Apostolic Reformation, or known as the NAR, that believes that the church should be governed by modern-day apostles. And revival is a huge part of how these apostles are going to usher in the end times. And it's um, something that I've done a couple of podcasts on. I highly recommend you listen to my conversation with Holly Pivot. Polly Pivik and Doug Guyvett, who wrote a, a book that I think every Christian should read called Counterfeit Kingdoms, talking about this movement that um, has such specific ideas about revival. And um, already, right now, I've seen social media posts where prominent NAR prophets and apostles and other people are heading there. Some have reported they're already there at Asbury taking part of this thing. So I want to leave you with a thought experiment. Imagine that 
every Bible in America was suddenly illegal. Now, I'm not at all saying I think that's happening. I'm just saying, thought experiment, go with me. Imagine. Imagine every Bible is suddenly illegal, and Bibles are being seized and burned and banned. And for the first time in your life, you are without a copy of the Word of God. So all you have access to is whatever you've memorized, which, by the way, is a really good reason to memorize Scripture. But let's say you hear through the grapevine that somebody, say, eight or nine hours away from your house has successfully hidden a copy of God's Word, and they're going to start reading it out loud, and maybe even some of their friends are going to join in, take turns and shifts, and read it 24 hours a day at a particular location. If people started getting in their cars and getting on planes to go there, for that, I would call that a revival on the spot because encountering the word of God is going to lead to repentance and the good fruit of standing fast on God's unchanging truth, right? So I think we should pray with hopeful hearts for these kids. Let's pray God is really doing something in their lives that will produce the fruit of repentance and the long-lasting effects of zeal for God's word and for uh, the truth of who God is. Let's pray that's the case. But we don't have to get in our cars and go there. We just we don't have to be you know promoting this social media bandwagon. Maybe we could just leave them alone and see what God does. So here's my advice: go to your own church, love and serve your family, disciple your kids, love your spouse, serve those who God puts in your path, live lives of faithful obedience to God, and don't be distracted by shiny objects. <laughs> <laughs> 